I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Please be seated. Welcome to the 22 January 2015 Town of Hampton Board of Selectments meeting. This evening we'll be speaking specifically to the town manager and department's analysis of the effect of the proposed budgets. We will move to the 2015 Warren signatures and then briefly discuss the annual report cover. If I may bring up a little historical perspective, there is a um, February 15th Hampton Union 1978 paper and it's uh, fraught and full of the pictures from the storm of 1978. Ah, yes. And to be sure, that was a, uh, a budget buster. Um, my daughter was three weeks old, two weeks old, living down on Cole Street, and that was uh, a heck of a time. And it was remarkable how the town stood up uh, and performed in that storm. There's uh, an issue here uh, on page five of that paper, and it talks about selectmen and budget committee in their interaction. And you can't make this up with some of the names that are in here, because it is, it is rather humorous. Um, an 11th hour change in the Hampton School budget for a 10% increase in the secretarial assistance account brought a response from Selectman Alan Bridal. Yeah. <laughs> Bridal had left the meeting, the scheduled Selectman's meeting, to look on one of the BUDCOMS proceedings and had words again or f of, of opposing the BUDCOMS changing the figures. According to Bridal, who was the Selectman's representative to the BUDCOM, the entire budget committee had in recent weeks gone over the budget in detail for the district, and on two occasions the issue would come up of a percent, 10 percent pay increase by the letter that he, along with budget committee, committee members Diane Lamontagne and Susan Fick, had voted against the increase. The budget committee had gone and they opposed it. Now, Mary Louise, you must have um, been about 18 when this was uh, No, actually, I was deputy town clerk at the time of that that um, storm, and I couldn't believe because all the people were coming up from the beach uh -huh. to to get help, and the junior high was open mm -hmm. to shelter them, and I went home, and it was just snow uptown. And just to continue on, and, and we'll get right into it. But early in the hearing, Mary Louise Woolsey and Bonnie Kishbaugh had made it known publicly they wished the Budcom would please consider these meager raises for these underpaid people. So it's uh, uh, a timely uh, article, and the names uh, I find quite uh, <laughs> quite uh, humorous. And thank you for your family service and your continued service. And I served Mary with Louise. Alan Bridal on the Board of Selectmen. A good man. The Board of Selectmen are the governing body of the town of Hampton. Uh, under New Hampshire RSA 4 to 1 colon 8, they manage the prudential affairs of the town. Uh, town budgets certainly come under that title, and uh, budgets and money are the nerve of government. This evening, uh, the town manager will discuss his perspective of the process with the, both the selectmen, the department heads, their budgets, the approvals, the budget committee's approval, and then this, um, this uh, reduction in the budget, this last hour budget reduction by the budget committee. We will then go from to uh, Mr. Welch to the finance director for her uh, salience and synopsis on exact figures and what that looks like and what that really means to the tax rate and to taxpayers. Then we'll go to uh, the police department, the fire department, and public works for their perspective on this budget committee um, slashing of the budget. Uh, Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I just sort of want to start out by saying that uh, we have a, a very good group of professionals, and regardless of the resolution regarding the budget, as will be voted by the town meeting, your professional employees will ensure that the very best that can be accomplished will be done on behalf of our citizens utilizing the budget approved by them in the above process. We are here to give a brief, broad brush explanation of the revisions of the budget as recommended by the Budget Committee for town meeting approval. The development of a budget begins as much as a year before the town meeting has an opportunity to vote on the end result. In an SB2 community, that development takes two very specific paths. <clears throat> the, per the first is to develop a regular budget that looks at traditional and continuing expenditures that we see each year as well as no new expenditures that will take place in the coming budget year, and of course, recommendations for new expenditures and expenses to cover identified problems or issues uh, that we must act upon for approval, and they must be brought to conclusion. 
The second is to develop a so-called default budget, as described in the statute, that represents the bottom floor of the previous budget expenses for the previous year, plus increases for contracts and legal obligations required by law for the coming year. The regular budget was completed and presented to the Budget Committee at that committee's starting hearings on October 21st, 2014 and continuing through 12 meetings and a hearing ending on January 20th, 2015. In each of those meetings, departments of the town presented their budget requests. Questions were asked and answered and their individual budgets were amended or not and then passed by the committee. At the end of the process, the committee took up the budget at a regular meeting and reduced the budget to beneath the floor established by the default budget. We are here tonight because that adopted budget represents some issues that the community should be aware of for the coming year. Department heads will explain where they have concerns and the funding suggested in their 2015, for their 2015 expenditures. Excuse me. I will address only those issues that concern town-wide issues are required by law or will impact specific safety issues either by individual department or town-wide. <coughs> One of the most important issues concerns the 25% town-wide decrease in funds to purchase gasoline and diesel fuels. I noted that the combined fuel accounts of all departments were overexpended by more than $11,000 in 2014. We purchased gas and diesel under a state contract at substantially less than the street pump price. Those costs under the contract fall as the pump price falls as you see it on the street. Example, in November, we paid $2.20 per gallon. We're now under $2 per gallon. Well, the pump price in November was in excess of $2.40 a gallon. Such a large decrease will force departments to decrease fuel consumption to make up for the decrease in the budget of $65,000 plus an overexpenditure of $11,000 in the previous year built into the budget for 2014 and now 15. This recommendation should be reviewed again. The departments will describe how it will affect their particular operations. There was a reduction of $40,000 in the Public Works Department budget that was presented as a new program, a program that forces us to comply with a federal law to monitor and test all stormwater collection systems on a regular and continuing basis. The funds necessary to comply will have to be taken from other programs. If that is from the drainage account, it virtually eliminates any work on drainage in the town during 2015. And we are a town with a lot of drainage problems. In another area, sidewalk maintenance has been reduced to 6,000 from 26,000, making it impossible to replace the sections of sidewalk urgently in need of repair and program for 2015. The last item that I will mention concerns the fire department. With two new fire stations, it seems <coughs> inappropriate to reduce the sums for heat and electricity for new buildings that have been doubled in size for our fire facilities. Likewise, the sums for water service were reduced. We must now pay for two sprinkler lines entering the buildings. Those costs were removed from the budget. They are no longer there in those line items. The police department was impacted in a number of accounts. The chief will describe and will, be offsetting, will have offsetting effects during the coming year. Restoring the default budget at, at the very least, the necessary increases to adjust for required changes needs to be considered. And with that, I'm going to go to the finance director for some information on prior and current budgets. Yep. Um, I put in each of your mailboxes an email to you earlier today, um, some budget history, one article history, and um, history on the tax rate going back to 2012. Um, in 2012, the uh, Board of Selectmen's requested budget was $24.8 million. In 2015, the Board of Selectmen's requested budget was 27.5, which is only about a $2.6 million difference in those four years. Um, or 9.6 percent, so not drastic considering the times have things, everything's increased and over the time. I also um, have listed for you the budget committee um, budget amounts along with the default budget amounts. Several times during this process I've heard 
people comment that we've had a default budget for several years, but in all reality, we had a default budget in 14, but in 12 and 13, we actually had the budget committee's budget was passed. However, it was below the default. So as Fred had mentioned, the default budget is the floor. You know, bottom of the line, that's what the uh, law was put in place for. And for those two years, we were below the floor. And this year, once again, the budget that they are putting forward puts us below that default budget level. Um, in 2000, in total warrant articles for 2013, there was $874,000 worth of warrant articles that passed. In 2014, there was uh, 1.96 million. And in 2015, the proposed total warrant articles is 3.4 million. The tax rate is the next section on your sheet there. Um, in 2012, the town's portion of the tax rate was $7.14. In 2013, the town's portion was $7.04. And in 2014, the town's uh, portion is $7.24. I also broke out the local schools for you. Um, in 2012, it was $7.02. In 2013, it was $7.66. And in 2014, it was $7.45 for the school portion of the tax rate, for the local schools. Um, the total tax rate in 13 and 14, both years, it was $18.31. And in 2012, it was $17.77. Um, the impact, the last section I have on the sheet <coughs> that I gave to you guys was in regards to the impact on the average single family assessment. I have spoken with the uh, assessor, Ed Tinker, and for 2014, that uh, value of the home is $329,300. Um, the difference in the tax bill is broken down here with our estimates the best that we can do with the Board of Selectmen requested budget that's a chain an increase of a dollar fifty per thousand with the budget con budget committee's budget it's a dollar nine and with a default budget it's a dollar fourteen and what that equates to is for the Board of Selectmen requested budget which came from the department heads what they felt their needs were you're, for the average family home you're looking at an increase in your tax bill of hundred and twenty five dollars um, and between the default budget and the budget committee's proposed budget, it's an uh, increase of $16 in your tax bill for if the um, default budget was to pass. So that's the history that I have for you tonight in regards to the budgets and warrant articles. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we go to the fire department? Sure. Well, thank you very much again for allowing us to speak in front of you tonight. Um, I appreciate that there's been a global feel to this and so the direction that I'd like to tell you about is where it's going to impo impact us specifically with fuel. We've seen a significant um, call increase. 2014, as you'll read in the annual report, was our highest volume for calls. We anticipate that that's going to continue to grow as we see the growth down at the beach. Uh, in just one area, we have two new neighborhoods that are coming online real quick and with increased population comes increased call and volume. Um, our job requires us to drive to the location, <coughs> so diesel fuel and gasoline certainly is impacted. Um, based on 2014 actual numbers, the proposed budget right now is already below uh, by $129. It's about $5,248 below what we project we'll need, and the impact for that will be, um, obviously, it'll, it'll be felt considerably. Um, with two new buildings, we have very large structures, and they're wonderful. They really are. We have 10,000 square feet down at the um, beach station. We have 10,000 square foot addition here on Winnicott Road. And to that, we have lights, heating, and water. Our water bill um, was $9,563 last year, actuals. <coughs> Excuse me. We've been relegated to uh, $1,370 for the proposed budget. We anticipate that this is going to be a loss of about $8,100. We anticipate that the water bill will remain at least stagnant um, throughout 2015. Electricity, we know, has already changed. We were um, identified, it was identified by the, the um, utility contractor that their rates were going up. We had a one year's time to look at our 2014 actuals. The budget was for $23,231. Actually spent in 2014 for the two buildings was $33,621. Mm -hmm. um, when we project out from there instead and look at what we've 
used uh, and spent for January's numbers right now as far as the invoices go, we anticipate that we're going to see a projected shortfall for electricity over um, this of $29,089 based on what we're seeing for an increase in rate hikes. Uh, with the heating, uh, oil, and fuel, the proposed budget has us at $18,500, and our actual last year was $20,886, so we're already at a deficit of $2,386. We project that deficit to be at approximately $5,500 based on what we're already seeing for invoices right now on utilities as they come in. Um, the total for water, electricity, and heating is approximately $43,000, a little bit more uh, than $43,000, based on our looking forward on the numbers that we have seen in January. When we look back at the actuals, where uh, it's a little bit shorter, but the actuals have changed because, as we know, the rates increases uh, haven't been applied to that number. Um, when it comes to what we will not get based on either budget, we do have a position that was placed in for the proposed budget and was those was $48,000 removed for the fire inspector's position. That position, unfortunately, will be cut based on the budget as it exists. Uh, the ice rescue sled and the training associated with that will also be cut, and there's been $28,000 that has been cut, a little over $28,000 has been cut from the overtime budget, which gives me pause and great concern if we ever had an event. When I was speaking on the cost of a fire, and I hate to reference fire, but that does seem to happen to us here at Hampton, um, the A-Block fire, which was in 2010, cost approximately $19,500 just for that fire. So one small residential structure, a uh, Cape home, a ranch style home for a fire, we can anticipate seeing $9,000, $10,000 just in overtime costs, mm -hmm. and that's essentially been eliminated for that. So we have, we will provide the best possible service, I promise you that, but there is going to be impact. We're seeing, um, already we're seeing, we're running out of deficit. When we look at our electricity bills versus last year and projecting out with the numbers that we have right now, we're already at 19% for this year, for January. So we are immediately feeling this impact. Sir? Can we go department by department, or do you want let's, to let's, let the de once? let's hear the departments let's first, please. Chief? Um, I'll echo uh, Jamie's assessment of the utilities. It's, a, it's an issue <coughs> where I'd like to tell you electric because of the fuel prices, the oil prices coming down are going to be affected, but we've seen they're not. If you pay an electric bill in Hampton, you probably just got your bill and noticed a nice jump in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't think the municipalities are going to fare any better, probably a little bit worse. So that's an issue going forward. Um, the fuel issue, again, looking at each one of my fuel lines, they have now been reduced below what the actuals were in 14. The actual use is not what we requested, what we budgeted, but our actual use in each fuel line is now set below what we used last year. And to interpret that, does that mean that we don't want to be proactive anymore? Because our ability to do our jobs is a little bit different than some other agencies. Our ability to be a, a professional agency is our ability to be out there in the public, in the public eye, preventing and detecting things before they get out of hand. Uh, I think, Mary Louise, you, you mentioned that, that you remember the days when you drove down Ocean Boulevard and you'd see an officer on every corner. Yes, sir. It's slowly getting back to that with our new officers and emphasizing those foot patrols, but you have to get people where they need to be. This will be impacted by this because also uh, affected was the part-time special officers' wages. The summer coverage full-time, which gives me the ability to send out full-time officers to walk with a part-time officer to get them trained and functional as a police officer. We just don't take new police officers and throw them out under the streets of Hampton because that is a formula for disaster. That is a formula for lawsuits, which will cost us more in the end. Training is our insurance policy. I think we, you know, former Chief Sullivan has said that. Uh, we were talking about that. I was at the Rockingham County Chiefs meeting, and we're all talking about training is a critical part of professional police work. The reason we don't see the problems in New Hampshire compared to other states is because the training we provide, I don't mind saying, is superior to most places that you go in this country. That's why year to year we are rated as one of the top places to live. It's our training. We take it serious and then we practice it. This is, I don't know how it can affect it. It's going to impact my ability to put people out and give them the, the most up-to-date training that we can provide to our officers. Um, I was, I got to be honest, a little bit at a loss when uh, the manager called me. 
that we had to sit down and discuss, you know, these line items of reductions. Because I went in on December 2nd, three-hour meeting, some good questions, some good give and take, <laughs> some suggestions, but we walked out of the room with a budget, and I believe the budget was for four million one hundred two thousand six hundred twelve dollars for the police department to move forward to the public hearing that was scheduled on January 14th. We didn't quite get there. Um, the reductions for the police department equated to $160,098 from what we proposed. Keeping in mind that not the budget from 14, but the proposed budget that we moved forward to the budget committee that they voted 11 to 4 to support going forward. So now I'm received good commentary about the things they want for the police department to add officers, keep up that level of training and the level of professionalism that they've come to expect from this department. So I have to say I was a little bit confused as to how between December 2nd <coughs> and then that January meeting, what went wrong? Where did I miss something? And if I did, I, I need to address that. I haven't received any phone calls from anybody asking about how is this going to impact the police department. So I'm not quite sure how to interpret what's occurred. As always, we will take what the taxpayers give us and give you our best effort. We will do the best we can. But we have to face some facts. We've been going with a lower number, as Christy highlighted, for a number of years. The mantra had always been, we will try to do more with less. That's not there anymore. The reality is, we're going to have to do less with less. And I'm okay with that. We, we will make it work. But there has to be a reality that less is less. We are at that point. I don't have the officers to just throw out in the street, and I will not throw officers out on the street that are not prepared. Good. Just I will not put out somebody that is not trained to our standard and ready to deal with the unique problems of policing Hampton Beach. I, I just I don't think I would be doing the right thing by the community. So we may have to work with a smaller, best trained force we can provide. That's the best I can offer you at this point moving forward. All right. Um, Public Works Department, uh, a number of us sat uh, together to come up with what I'm about to explain to you. Um, we examined our operations in light of the budget being proposed and determined that the operations will be impacted and the level of service to the re residents may decline. The following items or options for the Board of Selectmen may need to consider for the Department to stay within its budget line being presented. Uh, our department is looking at a $367 reduction between the amount approved by the budget manager and the Board of Selectmen, that process, and then what was presented to the Budget Committee. A number of our operations are fixed in that they are public safety type issues along with the Fire Department and the Police Department, mainly uh, refuse collection, wastewater treatment. EPA holds us to a very high standard. Um, so these are some of the options that the staff came up with. Uh, as I say, there was a number of us that weighed in on this. Uh, they suggested <coughs> reduction by two or elimination totally of the summer beach group. Uh, reduction of overtime for the highway staff, so we'll need to eliminate after call hours for everything purely except emergencies. So like, for instance, if they call and they say a tree's down, we just literally push it by the road and and put a couple of cones on it and wait for the morning. Uh, it was pointed out to me if we have a sewer back up overnight into a structure, uh, it's a, we might have to wait till the morning to actually, you know, clear the lines and, and then uh, when other people can come there and remedy that situation. Uh, possibly no household hazardous waste collection this spring. No work on the MS-4 permit. That's the permit that I have to bring forward to the EPA each May. Uh, we're expecting the new per permit comes out this particular uh, June. I went to a meeting a week or two ago, and that's, the, that's what's being told uh, to the state and is being relayed to us that it will probably be out in June for full implementation uh, within the fall. Uh, possible reduction in the number of days for trash collection, which would help us save on labor. It would save on fuel, and it would save on vehicle maintenance. 
if that's what the budget committee would like. Uh, reduction in the number of hours possibly at the transfer station, which would save in overtime labor, which has been cut, and electricity. Reduction possibly in the number of street lights because we had 208,000 budgeted. There again, uh, now it's in there at 200, but the, the lights are either on or they're not on. Um, we get charged for all of them. Uh, and um, so the only way to eliminate that number is pull the plug on some of them, which means going up to the head and literally taking it off. Uh, reducing the number of days we sweep along the beach sidewalk, this would save on uh, overtime labor, fuel, and certainly maintenance because uh, we go through a couple of uh, sweeper, the brushes will go through a couple of sets each summer, um, so it would come right out of vehicle maintenance. Um, last year we did seaweed removal at the town beaches, uh, well over 500 wet tons. Um, if we eliminate that, we could save on vehicle fuel. Uh, it was suggested that we stop raking Sun Valley section of the beach, uh, trash raking, cleaning. Mm -hmm. That would be a $12,000 savings. Um, we would, we've been on a process of replacing all of our traffic signs there under the federal highway guidance rules. We're supposed to have them all updated by 2017. So rather than waiting till then, we've been doing some each year. That, that's a, there's a cut in that budget. So the only signs that would be replaced are those directly related to safety such as a missing stop sign. Tree removal would be reduced to only those trees that are de determined to be an immediate threat to health and safety. Um, we have some nuisance trees, but we, we would just hold off on taking those out. Um, under the vehicle maintenance line, if a transmission fails in one of its vehicles, as it did in Unit 24 this past year, we will end up parking the vehicle until such time as we find the savings in other lines to permit us to actually repair it. Um, to reduce fuel usage, the vehicles would be parked, um, keys turned into the director, locked away, the maintenance dollars would be preserved for the more expensive refuse packers and the six-wheel plow trucks. I cannot ignore maintaining those, like your fire trucks, essential pieces of equipment. Um, the three ref sidearm refuse packers last year used 18,000 of the budget. If we stick with the 46 that's in there, that's what 30% of the budget just for those three vehicles. Doesn't leave much of anything for the others. Services like the fall leaf and brush or Christmas tree collection may be eliminated as it's a direct impact to fuel costs uh, for the department. Um, we currently deliver refuse and recycling carts to the residents. Um, one of my thoughts is that we take away the pickup truck that the recycle the transfer station uses it because that's other than once a ru day run up town for deposit, that's the only other thing they really use it for. So in fact, they, they, we, they'd have to get away without having one or borrow one from another department if push comes down the show. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, I asked if some of the cold weather clothing that the staff has, uh, we normally, if something's really worn out and frayed so they don't look rat ready tatty on the side of the road, we replace it. Well, we, we defer that for another year, for another budget. Um, the cost savings and elimination items were prepared by both the staff and the management based upon knowledge of our ability to control our costs. I say that because our department is service oriented in such things such as collecting the refuse, snow plow, salting the roads and treating all of the wastewater we receive are health and safety tasks that cannot be ignored or predicted. <coughs> Therefore, the department is forced to curtail services or avoid costs in other areas so that when something unpredictable occurs, we still have a budget remaining. So that's why I have to make ca cuts in other areas. You know, it's like this winter. Yeah, we haven't had a major snowstorm. Knock on wood. <laughs> Uh, we could have one Saturday night, and then we could have one each week for the rest of the winter, which would totally, you know, we don't know that. So I have to be, I have to preserve money, i.e. not spend it, in anticipation that it could and would snow. Uh, electrical costs is way up um, with, the, with the brewery. They're sending us more beer. Um, they get a bad batch. They, they send it to us. Two years ago, in 13, we used 191,000 electricity. 
Last year we used 167. It's been put in at about 160. But I already know, like the fire department, but our electrical usage is way up because the type of load that we're receiving smells like beer. And guess what? It takes a lot more electricity, aeration, to keep the tanks stirred for the bugs to reduce that. So it's unavoidable. So because the wastewater electrical cost is unavoidable, I have to cut somewhere else just so I can balance my budget. Chris, clarify that the beer is not for consumption, it's for <laughs> processing? Correct. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's washed on water. They, they, they make a 30,000 gallon run of beer, they probably have 2,000 gallons of, of wash water or, right. or more. Right. So it comes in as a slug, high BOD load, and it smells like beer. So, um, but it just, it reeks, it runs spikes. I'm using as much electricity in January as I normally use in June. Yeah. In June and July, because the water temperature is much warmer, that's my high, that's, that's my peak months. So I know I'm going to be ahead of the curve on electricity use alone, but I can't <laughs> ignore it. Matter of fact, it's, it's automatic, it's built into the system. Thank you very much. We've heard from the uh, department heads, we've heard from uh, finance, uh, and we've heard from Mr. Welch. Uh, the board unanimously approved the uh, selectman's budget. Uh, you were approved by the Budget Committee uh, for your budgets that you presented when you presented directly. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we'll go, because we've already been over this. There may be some salience that the Board has uh, this evening. Mary uh, Louise, please. I have a couple. Yes, ma'am. First of all, as far as the electricity, that's a result of the shortage of natural gas. So there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, some of the fuel costs, the oil costs have gone down now. Fire stations are heated by gas, if I recall, Correct. right? Same for you, Chief. Gas, heat, and yes. the police? Yeah. And, of course, you guys. We have gas, yeah. heat, in, in the garage. And so you're not going to be able to get away from the increases in the uh, heating fuel, specifically natural gas. Mm -hmm. That's not only affecting your heating fuel, but it's affecting your electricity, which is also produced from the natural gas. So with the high costs of the natural gas situation at this time uh, we're stuck. I have a couple of things for each department as I'm going through this and, and this this really is a problem. First of all the sheet that Christy gave us um, the average single family assessment I think the thing that's not reflected in this you're talking about whatever $125 extra a year but you're talking single family here we have had a building boom in this community. You have many units now, the A blocks, you've had some of these big builds, Peter Ross's build at the end of Winnicunnet Road, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of these new builds coming online. Uh, thank God we're getting the sewer buy-in charge for those, but that's a relatively small, it's good to have the income, but it's a relatively small piece. But you're going to have some of these large properties take up some of the slack in taxes. It's not all going to fall on the little guy in their single family home. I'm not going to take the whole burden of that on my little home. So you have to look at the overall picture of what's happening in our economy. And the new builds, once they come online and are starting to sell the units to people, are going to be bringing in taxes, which is why I said at the Budget Committee the other night what I said, that the um, it's, it's the value of the properties that's critical, not how many permanent residents there are in Hampton. The assessing officer, if I recall, told us that at the moment the total property value of this town is $3 billion, billion with a B in ch and change, and he anticipates before April 1st, which is the drop dead date for the tax year, another uh, 31 million in building permits and, and construction. So we are growing. That has a flip side in the context of what both chiefs have said. We're now requiring more service because we have more people, we have more traffic, we have mo more potential for <coughs> dangerous situations. But I don't want to see everybody crying and whining about their poor little single family house premiums going up and taxes going up because we have the potential of spreading the tax base 
to accommodate the services that we need. Um, uh, in the police department, Chief, um, your training and recruitment line was cut. We have talked and we have talked and we have talked about the need for special police officers in this community. And you said you were down maybe around 30 if you're, if you're saying your prayers at night and most of them stay. Uh, we should be up in the 50 to 60 range of special police officers for this community. We are having a problem, and, and a week ago, Monday night, when you were referencing the heroin problem, and I was watching some of the news today, and they're talking about this all over the place, in Vermont, in the local communities, everybody is talking about the heroin problem. What are we supposed to do? We're well, going to have to have more police officers. Prior to this happening, mm -hmm. and you know, I talked to the manager about something that we have been considering for a number of years and opportunities brought to our availability to try to really help with that problem. Mm. And I wasn't going to discuss because it's more of an operational issue, but I think it warrants it under these circumstances is we are trying to put an officer onto a task force. That Again, Rockingham County was recently designated a high intensity drug trafficking area which opens up certain funding mm -hmm. to help combat specific problems like the heroin epidemic. We are in the area where the DEA and the Heide Group looks at Route 95. It's a drug corridor. Oh, yeah. There's no getting around it. It yep. is a drug corridor. They're looking for particip participation from agencies that are along that corridor, particularly areas that draw large groups of people. Without saying Hampton, they were saying Hampton. Okay? They're looking for our yep. participation, and yep. I, I believe it's what we should do. So I've started going down that path. I, I fully intend to continue going down that path. The problem is I still have my other problems to deal with yep. in the conventional manner. These types of uh, changes to a budget that was, again, approved to move forward can't help but impair that. Okay? It all starts, you know, we always talk about what, what the operation of the police department is. It all supports patrol. Everything we do, everybody that functions in that police department, supports patrol. But because we have these specific problems that we have to take these types of actions on and the type of special enforcements we have to do, I have to draw it from somewhere. If I have to draw it from somebody that's in patrol or somebody doing something else, I like the ability to backfill that with qualified people. This is making that more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible. It is certainly more difficult to accomplish that. Several years ago when my friend Mr. Pierce ran for the Board of Selectmen, I recall the night of the uh, uh, little get-together when people make their presentations and say why they should be elected to office. And I can remember hearing him say something about the job of a selectman is to provide services for the public. And I uh, cornered him a few days later and said to him, the primary job of the Board of Selectmen is to protect the town from liability, liability, liability. And particularly your two departments, police and fire, fall under that heading. Um, I stood at the polls last November and I had person after person stop me, people from Boar's Head, the numbered streets, the North Beach, complaining about the parking, complaining about the inability for emergency vehicles to get up and down the streets with all the problems that are going on. I asked my board to if we can get together and have a, a couple of hearings for those residents and see if there's something we can do. But without your officers and enough of your officers to enforce that, what are we going to tell these people? And they live here and they pay taxes here and they're residents here. What are we to tell the public in this community? If we have to sit there and look them in the eye and say, we understand your problem, and we can't help it. We're going to be handicapped. I, I think it comes down to we have to face some facts. We're not building a widget here, okay? If I could do a budget that I could tell you, you know, every month I'm going to spend this percent, every month would be consistent, my life would be easy. I think everybody's life would be easy here. We'd make the budget and we'd be all done for the year. We were good to go. The problem we deal with is we are a 
destination community. A lot of it's based on weather and events, mm -hmm. and we can't predict that. Now, I understand when people look at a, a line item that, you know, we get to November and well, you, you haven't even come close to spending that. Yes, correct. We have to have contingencies for those times when we go through, like a couple years ago, we, we dealt with a number of tragedies in this community and mm -hmm. a number of deaths were, that were for less than natural causes that we had to investigate and deal with those crime scenes, and that chewed up a lot of manpower and money. Yeah. I can't manage a police department with that slim margin of error knowing that if one bad incident means I got to come back yeah. to you folks and request some assistance on how to get a supplemental budget. Yeah. I don't think that's really how we should operate. I think we have to respect that we have to have a contingency. I think it's our obligation to the safety of the community to have that contingency mm -hmm. in the event these bad things happen. I hope they don't and I think we want to be as preventative as we can to prevent them but we have to be prepared that they do happen. Yeah. And By my shrieking these margins of error, that's going to be very difficult to achieve. And my big concern is that it's a terrible risk for your officers to be out there shorthanded. It's a dreadful risk to you as well as to the public. Ma'am, if um, I may, for just a moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not only a, a single department issue when something right. bad arises. I'm moving um, to you. I understand. <laughs> uh, when, when the police officers go to a drug uh, situation, yep. very often they become our patients. So the fire department's impacted as well. And we're going there to transport, you know, victims of overdose or whatever it might be. And if not, then we're also transporting family members. So it, it becomes a larger scope, whereas it might be identified as a small issue or a one department issue. It's really global. We're oh, seeing yes. a, a lot of rise because oh, of that. And I'm not trying to shortchange you because okay. you're next on my list. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> I'm not going to forget Chris it. either. Uh, same thing for you with the electricity, of course, and the heating fuel with the natural gas prices. The um, failure to fund the fire inspector is a huge problem for this community. I had uh, the pleasure of, <coughs> of discussing some of this with uh, Precinct Commissioner Ladd uh, in the last few days. And uh, if the inspections aren't made on time. That's crippling the business community. And we're looking for revenue out of the business community down at the beach. That's part of the engine that drives the community, not just at the beach. But I, very short-sighted not to fund a fire inspector. That position never, never should have been removed to begin with. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't know uh, where we're going here. I really don't, gentlemen. And what I said to Chief... Sawyer, the same applies to you in the fire department. We know you need more manpower. You can't take on specials like the police department does, but we know that you need more manpower too, and it's a dreadful problem. Uh, briefly on uh, public works, uh, I did note, Chris, the um, shortfall in the transfer station. Um, people in this town are paying their taxes, and one of the services they truly appreciate is to be able to go to the transfer station. And it does save the town some money, whether you're crying about overtime or not. We're saving the town money. I'm a frequent visitor, I admit, at the transfer station. It helps. It gets, it's a tremendous convenience for the public. And it helps to prevent you being even more overloaded with waste. Speaking of the highway department, because I made a little, little note, you're talking about reducing overtime for the highway staff. Um, Mr. Pluff and I were having a conversation a week or so ago with the manager, and Mr. Pluff said, to all intents and purposes, and, and he has a pretty good feel for this, that we have no highway staff. We're spending so much time picking up waste in this community, we really don't have a highway crew anymore. So you're being shorted out there, too. But this this is this is a very unfortunate situation and to cut just to cut wastewater treatment plant maintenance 140,000 requested 55,000 what are you supposed to do with that and if the wastewater treatment plant can run where are we stuff breaks down you, you have to, it's constant maintenance because the plant is old and Fred guess gave a guesstimate to the planning board December 2012 when he was in there with me on the impact fees, $60 million to $100 million to replace and restructure that wastewater treatment plant. 
we can't afford to let that go without keeping up on the maintenance. We can't afford it. Our debt service now is around 31 million, Christy. Mm -hmm. Feature uh, an article for the public for 60 million to 100 million for that wastewater treatment plant. I said this is this is really short-sighted, and I appreciate the effort that all of you are making. And we'll have to have a frank discussion at the deliberative session, and then talk to the public before the vote. Thank you, Selectman Wilson. Selectman Griffin. Um, <coughs> what I would like to know, uh, Mr. Welsh, is how often does the budget committees of other communities do this? I've worked in seven communities in New Hampshire. This is my seventh, and one, one community out of the state. Um, I've never experienced this before in the 52 years I've been in government. Uh, budget committees do make cuts, and that's what they're there for to analyze mm -hmm. programs and proposals, and, and particularly new proposals, and then to review those to come to a decision as to whether or not this is the time to do those new proposals and new work. Sometimes it's yes and sometimes it's no. Uh, but I have never seen a committee in my 52 years go in and cut the meat right down to the bone. It just doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, we've all, I've, in all the years I've been here um, at the Board of Selectmen, they always at the budget, budget committee like to say that um, they ask the department heads to tell them what they really need. Not what they want, but what they really need. And I think our department heads did a good job mm -hmm. doing that. Yep. And um, it's, it's unfortunate because people are not going to be very happy when all of a sudden uh, they're not going to be able to have the, the basic necessities that they want, like their Christmas trees removed. I mean, that's a, such a small thing, but there are many things that are equivalent to that. The fall pickup and, you know, different things. The, uh, I know that in the past when there were cuts at the, um, at the, you know, the dump or the transfer station, um, people were very unhappy. They don't even like the hours changed a couple of hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that's going to be a reality. Um, you know, I think if we're going to have any cuts, I'd like to see a cut in the amount of budget committee people there so that people are not just swept in because no one else puts their name up to run. And that's what we have there. And I think that when people do things like this, that gives us a shortage of potential budget committee members in the future because no one wants to be part of such a situation. And I don't think it's fair to anybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Slightly well. I think we had more than three departments, but the three departments that are here hmm. try to make a very reasonable budget. I think last year when I ran for selectman, and I know when Jim ran for selectman, I heard from a lot of people that they were tired of hearing stuff kicked down the road, things not being done. Well, quite frankly, for years they haven't been done. And we have. We've kicked that can down the road. Now were taxes held low? Yes. However, stuff needs to get done. And the only way that can get done is if we have some increases in the budget. You talk about, we talked about vehicles and a warrant article, and they were all against the vehicles that Public Works wanted. And there, there, was, there was some good comments made at that meeting, and I listened to it. But if we're going to keep old vehicles, then we've got get, we to address the money on how we're going to fix those old vehicles. Because yes, if we're going to keep those old vehicles, they're going to cost more to fix. We've got to take mon put money in there to rehab. That's not in this budget. That's what they said. They said we should rehab them. Well, if you're going to say rehab them, then you got to give them the money. When you, we talk, I've talked to people uptown. They'd like to see in the summertime having the, the two-hour cop yes. that used to walk around uptown yes. and just show a presence up there. We can't do it if we don't have any money for summer specials or for regular police officers yeah. or overtime. Uh, we talk, uh, the town manager talked about sidewalks. People do a lot of walking in this town. And our sidewalks are getting old. 
and some of them are getting with roots and everything else they're being tossed up they're breaking down just because of old age and they're gonna they need to be repaired well if we cut all the money out of, of doing sidewalks how can they get done drainage it was dropped what 20,000 was taken out of that mm. or about that mm. about 25,000 oh, yeah it was a substantial amount yes whatever was I don't remember the exact figure that was taken out of it our drainage is getting bad we're finding that out up on on Lafayette Road and High Street because we haven't yeah. done anything with that for so long yeah. those pipes under the road are deteriorating and the longer we don't start doing some maintenance on them the worse we're gonna be uh, we're in a tough position here I know these three departments will do the excellent job at providing the best services they can for the money they have but that being said I don't want to hear it from the people that say oh well, the first thing we're gonna do is cut services we haven't gone up uh, the finance director said what in four years it was a nine and a half percent I'd, 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 I'd challenge anybody to run their own house in the past four years yeah. on less than nine and a half percent increase yeah. and a nine and a half percent increase is what we asked for that's not what the, the what they got so right, that was compared to the board of selections requested that was our, our requested one is nine was nine and a half percent up over 2012 yeah. so 70,000 rusty out of drainage 70,000 out of drainage so there's a lot that can't be done in this town and that's including cleaning swales cleaning mm -hmm. you know flushing the drains and everything else we've got to start covering our infrastructure and our infrastructure is everything from drainage sewer mm -hmm. the vehicles to buildings we've done a good job at building a couple of buildings here the past few years but other things are going to come up mm -hmm. so I, I hope the people will come to the deliberative session I hope they'll come and, and make the changes I think it was very short-sighted of the budget committee they, they brought these department heads in there they gave them the false Im, uh, impression that their budgets were okay after dealing with each one of them two three four hours at a whack and then at the 11th hour the 11th day come in and make these drastic cuts was totally unprofessional Thank you, sir. Uh, to Mr. Waddell, and thank you, sir, for your uh, services, the liaison with the Budget Committee this year. And, of course, uh, we were eager to hear your remarks. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, you know, <clears throat> a couple of things. I mean, the Chief Sawyer said, you know, you, you keep doing with less and less and less. You can't do it. You can't do more with less. I mean, I mean we, we operated under that. That was the slogan. We're going to do more with less because, you know, we understood. Yeah. Times. The economy was bad, but as we, we start crawling out of that, and I know there's other issues involved here, yeah. but we haven't seen that transpire over to the municipal services. Rusty just pointed out that yeah. who in their own household has been able to operate with the same minimal increases? Mm -hmm. you, you can't. You wouldn't be able to afford your house. So, again, we will do what we can do to the best of our ability, but we have to be realistic that we're not going to be able to do more with less anymore, but we're at that we are at that point of doing less with less and we'll just do the best we can with that less <laughs> right and and the thing is you know I, I appreciate the homeowners and I appreciate the rational taxpayers and trying to keep the tax rate exactly where it is but you can't do it forever and I think I think as everybody has said here and I think as you guys really understand the process was flawed it was totally flawed I mean when you to ask somebody to come in and you grill them and grill them and grill them and each one of you was grilled I was there and then you take a vote and I think Jim O'Loughlin the other night at the budget committee brought up that you know out of 54 votes 33 were mm -hmm. uh, unanimous yes. X amount yeah. that they're all passed mm -hmm. and then to have at the last moment it was 1030 at night to say well here's the figure we're going to start with and we're going to cut from that mm. well what w my question is why did we have all those meetings what was going on why did why did you guys come in and defend your budgets you know I mean I, I agree that with Rick some, or whoever said that sometimes cuts are made and and legitimately maybe maybe they say chief go back we need you to cut two percent but but figure out where you can cut it and come back and tell us or, or PPW we get, we need you got to cut but come back you do it you're the expert mm. you know you're the guy that knows what should be going on mm -hmm. and I think the town has to realize that and the town has to realize that the town's growing and there will be more tax revenue yes. but we need more revenue probably you know and where are we going to get it from 
you know, and how are you going to run the town? I mean, there, there are certain services that you want to provide, that you have to provide, that you want people to say, I want to move to Hampton because what it is, you know? I mean, we're a unique town that we're a population of, what, just under 15,000? Mm -hmm. But right. in the summer, on 4th of July, we could be 100,000? I mean, how many other towns have that? Higher. And yeah. then you have those services that you have to provide? Yeah. And I think we're still keeping our budget within a, a reasonable 14,000 population town, mm -hmm. you know? I think, I think as we have as a, as a selectman, Phil's brought it up, Chairman's brought it up m many times, past selectmen have brought it up, we need more from the state. The state's getting a lot out of us. They're getting a lot of fire protection, a lot of police protection, a lot of DPW. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need a fair share. Right. We're not getting it. Absolutely. We need it. But I mean, I, I think if, if you're going to have, a, if you're going to ask people to provide a budget, you're going to ask people to defend a budget, you're going to vote on it, then go with it. And I think people have to come out. People in town have to decide, do I want the, this or not? You know, they, they, you can't just look at your bottom line tax bill. What do I want the town to do? How do I want the town to, to operate? What kind of services do I want in this town? And that's a decision they have to make. Thank you. Again, uh, Selectman Bell, thanks for that great work uh, as the liaison with the Budget Committee and your membership on that. Uh, just a couple things wrapping up. And of course, again, uh, the Board of Selectmen were unanimous in the uh, approval of our own budget. I, I don't often get involved in, and very seldom do with what other boards do because uh, you respect those independent boards. I was struck um, by the uh, rationale from the budget chair in developing uh, her uh, concept of fuel uh, allocation as a resource. Uh, may I ask any of you department heads if you were consulted about uh, your fuel usage uh, by the chair prior to uh, slashing that budget. The well, last conversation I had was the night I presented my budget, and that came as a total surprise. So that's a unanimous that. negative? No, sir. I can't speak for Keith. Uh, I'm, I'm, I wasn't aware of I'm it. I'm willing to bet to say no. But I, I was struck by um, uh, the fact that the chair who uh, sponsored that, that uh, um, slashing of the budget uh, to the bone is, I think, what everyone's opinion is. But she did have time to uh, ask a stockbroker, uh, and that was uh, on the recorded show, uh, what he thought about the Hampton Fire Department's fuel uh, challenges, the Hampton Police Department's fuel challenges, on the public works. And the public works operates uh, on a five-star beach, uh, cleansing millions of dollars of waste uh, without flaw. Uh, and if that goes south, the beach goes south mm -hmm. and people stop coming up the highway and the governor's going to be down here because uh, the state's out of money and it will be a huge revenue drain. So I just found that interesting. I, I think it speaks to uh, the dissatisfaction uh, with that whole budget committee process, uh, louder than anything else. Um, the department heads have brought it forward their budget. It has gone to the town manager. It has gone to the board of selectmen. On the budget committee, you have brought your budget forwards. You were all approved. You were approved at this level. Um, they have come and been borne scrutiny by the town manager, by the boards. Um, there have been recommendations. There have been, there've been votes. And now it's going to go to the people. It's going to go to the deliberative session. And ultimately, this is what the people in town will be uh, voting on. And it's their budget. And it's up to the town to get involved because they're the ones ultimately that uh, pass your budget or not. And so when we, we do have these differences of opinion in leadership styles and technical analysis of operations, uh, we can talk all night about that. But at the end of the day, it's the citizenry and the voter that's got to get involved with this, and they will ultimately decide uh, what's going on. My concern is, uh, is Mary Louise Woolsey has talked about liability, and it extends past that, that, that word, and that's a, that's a serious word. Uh, but it's the operational risk management in this community. And it's about the life and health and safety of young children. It's about senior citizens. And it's about all of us. And I think this is a, a far too aggressive cut. And uh, I think it endangers the community. It endangers our five-star quality beach. It endangers our standard of living. And it challenges our leadership, which has surge populations of hundreds of thousands of people in the middle of summer mm. on a weekend in a moment's notice. It challenges our leadership when we just were uh, reviewing the 1978 storm where 
our leaders are counting pennies and spending more time working on budgets than they are doing the jobs that they are paid to do, which is to lead first responders. So that's a huge, huge challenge. I think it endangers your employees as well, and so we're concerned about that. And going forward again, it's just going to go back to the people, and hopefully they'll support the selectmen's budget and they'll support an investment in their own community. I'd like to thank you for coming in tonight. We're going to move on to some other business. Mr. Chairman, and Selectman could I do one, one more, more thing too? <coughs> I, this and this does concern me. The quote default budget has turned into a sacred cow mm -hmm. of some kind here. Because we're an SB2 town, that's a fallback position. All it is is a numerical calculation of what the town ran on in the prior year, the basics that have to be paid, the debt service, the salaries, the bread and butter that has to be paid. It's not a goal. It's not a shining star. It's not something you should aspire to. It's just figures on a page in case the public in its wisdom should vote against the proposed operating budget. You're not supposed to set your sights on this. This shouldn't be what you're aiming for when you're doing the budgeting season. And to, to use this and to keep threatening the public. If you're negative long enough, the negativity will stick. And if you keep saying to the public, it's like saying to your kids, well, you're no good. You, you won't succeed. Why are you bothering to go to school? If you keep saying, oh, the public will never pass that. Oh, it'll be a definite default budget. Oh, nothing's going to happen positive. Oh, everything's going down the rabbit hole. Well, what do you think the public is going to pick up from that? The default budget, by the way, by the way, all goes away after the vote in March. Because once the vote is taken, there's no such thing as a default budget. It becomes the actual town operating budget. So the default budget is there as a guide for you during the budgeting season but it doesn't have a life of its own. It shouldn't have a life of its own. And that, that's what has distressed me this past year, the focusing on and, and the holding up as an example the default budget. It's nothing but a bunch of figures as a backstop that Christie and her department put together. That's all it is. It isn't a sacred cow. Please come to the deliberative session. And please forget anything that says default and help us work to adequately fund the services that are needed in this community. Thank you. Very well said. Appreciate it. Stand gentlemen, well young lady, so. thank you. Thank Good you. night. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you, Christy. Mr. Welch, number two, 2015 warrant signatures. Will you lead us through the administration of our final um, addressing of this, perhaps? Yes, sir, I will. Um, the last time the board met, which was January 13th, uh, that was immediately following uh, the final submission of petition warrant articles. That was the final day they could be submitted. Mm -hmm. Uh, we only had three members present, and the board voted to make recommendations with regards to the articles that the petition auditors should not vote on before. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess my question is, would the board like to reopen that so you can get a full board vote recorded with regards to those warrant articles? The board's pleasure. That would be fine by me. Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. Um, there, there was a consensus for that. Would you uh, read each warrant article, the vote that was taken, and then we'll... Uh, We'll ask for another I'd be delighted to, Mr. Chairman. The first one is Article Number 45, the Town Clerk's Salary Petition. A petition of 25 or more registered voters to see if the town will vote to increase the annual salary of the Town Clerk from 55219 to 6188, with a sum of 58945 to be appropriated for the fiscal year 2015. The vote of the Board of Selectmen was to recommend the Article 300. Thank you. A motion. I'll so move the, to recommend. All those in favor? Uh, and oh. I have a comment after. Second. Okay, it's seconded. Yes, ma'am. The town clerk is in her eighth year of service to this community. She has been elected to office 
three times. The town clerk's office has expanded its services and every service that it expands ends up with more revenue for the town of Hampton because they are performing a service for the taxpayers. And the town clerk's budget, annual budget, is in the neighborhood of 200 and something thousand dollars. Her office brings that in in a month. The running of her whole office, the paying of salaries, is all accomplished in one month out of the year. The 11, other 11 months ends up with $3 million in revenue for this community. I think it's embarrassing to have the town clerk have to petition for a, a salary raise. I think it's a dreadful embarrassment. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the next one is uh, Article 46, Deed Restriction Removal, petitioned. On the petition of John and uh, Judith Doherty, and at least 25 Hampton registered voters, shall the town of Hampton vote to remove deed restriction number four, relating to allowing only one single family dwelling to be placed on a lot, for the limited purpose of allowing the owners of two seasonal dwellings at 3 Toppin Street. Hampton tax map number 131, lot 502. That's the old number existing. Mm -hmm. To replace one existing and failing seasonal dwelling with property, a properly built year-round dwelling, each that the owners can relocate and retire to in Hampton. The new dwelling will meet all local building and zoning codes. There are currently two dwellings on said lot. Further to authorize and direct the selectmen to execute, deliver, and record notice of this vote at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds at no charge to the town. Not recommended by the Board of Selectmen 021. I'll move to not recommend. I'll second. Now, wh why Questions, is this, great. Discussion, Mr. Why Walsh. isn't this, uh, it doesn't have any money value to it. It doesn't, but you, you have the ability, you're the only board in town that has the ability to recommend on every article. Uh, the, the question here is, they would like to remove one building, tear it down, rebuild it, uh, and uh, live there as a permanent resident, uh, still retaining the other building, which is a violation of the zoning mm -hmm. and, the, and the deed restrictions. You're only, they're only allowed, to, it would be violating the, deed, the other deed restrictions. Mm -hmm. That's why they need to ask for this approval. Could, could I just have some clarification yes, on this? Yes, sir, please. Would, uh, the vote was... Uh, zero, zero two one. Two one. Oh, one abstained. What I'm saying. Okay. Where is it again? Pardon. Ancient Where, Highway. A, on Ancient Highway. It's on a, it's, it's uh, three Toppin Street. Yeah, off so off Ancient Highway. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think there's one other dwelling in that area that has two buildings on the same lot. Mm. If I recall correctly, this is a corner lot, as I understand it. I object to overriding deed restrictions. <clears throat> Any further discussion? There's a motion to deny. All to those not in recommend, not right. recommend. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Four. I abstain. And an abstention. Thank you. Zero four one. Yeah. Article number forty-seven: the Ice Pond Dam petition. <clears throat> petition of Jay Dinner and twenty-five registered voters in Hampton. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of ninety thousand dollars for the purpose of rebuilding the collapsed Ice Pond Dam? including stop log gates that can be removed and replaced to allow the pond to be used for stormwater storage in the event of a major rainstorm. The Hampton Conservation Commission has committed $40,000 towards the final cost estimate of $130,000 for rebuilding the dam and has paid for the engineering study and design for the replacement dam, both of which have been completed. We'll be looking for donations from individuals and outside organizations to help reduce the $90,000 needed from the town to complete the project. Uh, recommendation of the Board of Selectmen was not to recommend the Article 030. A motion, please. No, wait, wait a minute. To not recommend. You voted not to recommend. Correct, the but three it wouldn't be 030. Yeah, it will be 300. Zero. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. And I, I repeat the motion to not recommend. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Five zero zero. <coughs> Article 48, reduce budget committee members petitioned. On petition of Nathan Page and 25 uh, or more registered voters of Hampton, 
Shall the Town of Hampton reduce the number of at-large members serving on the, the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee to seven, not including representatives from other boards, as provided under RSA 32 15-Roman uh, 4? This change will take place via attrition as terms expire beginning in 2016 until the number of at-large members of the <coughs> com committee reaches seven. Subsequently, annual elections will be held to maintain the membership of the Municipal Budget Committee at seven at-large members. It was recommended by the Board 210. Thank you, I'll sir. I'll move to recommend. A, yeah, I have a question. Sir. Um, does an even number create a problem? Yes. Well, not according to the statute. That's uh, When I read the statute, I said somebody, and I worked on that statute, <laughs> somebody had to be uh, off of Never Neverland when they did it because basically what it says is you can't have less than three. You can have any number you want other than that. And how you increase or reduce is up to the town. So it needs direction and correction. The, the statute needs to be amended so that it should be an odd number. Yeah. And maybe somebody will amend this on the floor and make it six well, or eight or whatever. It. Oh, yeah. So they can't amend it. They can't amend it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. But you're um, right. It would, with the three appointed members, yeah, it would come up yeah. with ten. Yeah. <laughs> right. In addition to that, gentlemen, it is, um, it is concentrating power, if you will, in fewer individuals. I know some people get upset at the size of the budget committee, but not all budget committees uh, perform the same way, shall I say. And it is possible sure. to run a 15-member budget committee successfully, depending on, on leadership. So I think it's a dangerous article. Sure. I have a problem with it. Bec uh, not with. I think it's a good idea. Um, I think that the problem here is getting enough people to run for the budget committee. That's why we have some of the problems we have now. People were uh, are there that were... Uh, had there was no one running against them and it happens every year and this is a problem this is probably this year the last two years is the worst I've seen the result has been the worst and um, I think there needs to be less people there's less people that want to put their name up and with the way that it goes there I don't blame people for not wanting to be a member Mr. Bridal. well I think um, I, I couldn't agree with you more Rick however to get to that, we have to have this article. I think uh, it's important to make sure the public understands that. And the people that are elected this year will be on there for three years. The people will, it will start to reduce them. And I, and I like what the town manager says, and maybe we should make it to five so that there's an odd number. Yeah, I'm and, in favor And maybe of we also. should do that. So it's important that the people out there do run. You know, stand up. Support your town. Get involved. It isn't going to change just by getting upset with it. you got to get out there and get involved. So encourage them to run. The filing period is open right now. So if they're out there... They have until next Friday mm -hmm. at five o'clock to fill it to file at the town at the town clerk's office. I would encourage anybody and everybody to get out there and run. Thank you. So, so you're saying freedom has a price? Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm going to vote for this. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with Mary Louise that it could be run with 15. <coughs> it could be run efficiently. I didn't see that happen. Uh, but I also agree much more with Rick and, and uh, Rusty that we have people just being appointed to it because you don't get enough people to run. Yeah. So I think it needs to be needs to be cut down. And uh, just just as an aside, I think the budget committee was upset that this person didn't come talk to, talk to them, and I find that to be uh, kind of uh, interesting since the budget committee didn't go back to the department heads to talk to them. They didn't. What person? Nathan didn't. wasn't at the meeting. Had the didn't come meeting. and talk to them before putting this Warren article out. But the same thing happened in a much more serious. Manner. Every citizen has a right to put a warrant out. Yeah. Thank you. And I think we've we've discussed. And, and the motion is to bring the board down uh, with ensuing election. Uh, well, if you want schedules. to rephrase, because I move to not recommend. Yeah. Let, let me just let me just speak to the yeah. town manager, Mr. Welch. Sure. The the motion should be. 
on the budget? Uh, mm -hmm. We talked about this before, and I think that the emotion should be in the positive sense. Yes. yes. So there's no confusion about the vote. Thank I'll you. Make a motion that we recommend it. A second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Four in I'm favor opposed. and one opposed. Thank you. Four, one. It's just like running a board of selectmen, gentlemen. Any board that you're running it depends upon the participation and the character of the individuals who are Correct. Part of that. That's true. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, Article Number 49, which is the last article in the warrant, modified deed fence restriction petition. Upon petition of at least 25 legal voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. to see if the town will vote to modify restriction number three in those deeds recorded at book. 2579, page 2377, 2591, page 1378, and 4221, page 2612, book 4721, page 2616, to permit fencing no higher than six feet on that property located at 14, 16, and 20, 22, and 26 End Street, shown as lots 114, 115, 116, 117, 117 and on tax map uh, 293. The prior vote of the board was 3-0 in favor. I I watched that. I watched Mark's presentation. I oh, think it was yes. the zoning board. I, I'm uneasy after having watched that. Thank you. Uh, the, the vote was 3-0 uh, in favor. Uh, questions? Uh, Mary Louise, you're set. Mr. Griffin? I'm all set. Mr. Waddell? I'm set. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept. A second. Hello. A second on the motion. A second. And all those in favor? And I'm opposed. Four, one, one, one Four. opposed. That completes recommendations on all the warrant articles. So we will see that those are put on the warrants for the consumption of the registered voters of the town. Thank you, sir. Uh, the annual report, could you? Well, I just I want to hand these around. These are the warrants okay. uh, that you. need to be signed. There are uh -huh. on each clip section, there are two pages. And you have three signatures on each clip section. I'll stop them over here because you're right my, next to me. My, my. Um, At least we don't have to print our names. That's true. <laughs> uh, we we had requested, or are, are requesting, that the board of selectmen consider and we hope approve the front cover for the annual town report. That's very colorful. I like that. This uh, includes. Uh, we asked the American Legion to assemble the uh, World War II Korean and Vietnam veterans okay. and uh, we're starting to lose those individuals to the community and uh, we wanted to get as many as possible on the front cover of the town report if the board would approve that and we we, we managed to do that the back cover is a collage of various scenes around the community it's a wonderful wonderful portrayal of those veterans is there a motion also moved I'll second accept. all those in favor unanimous and I believe that Christy She's still here? No. She's left. Her water no. jug is. Bless her heart. She okay. Had she had a form that you had to sign. Oh. So I hope she's still in the building because oh, the water jug is still over there. So. Are we still yeah. meeting tomorrow night? No, ma'am. If you sign these oh, this oh, evening, then, look at that. then uh, oh, in the form that she heart. has. You have to sign uh, the second page, too. Oh, you're right. Boy, okay. that's uh, the thing you then, on then, then you are done with the warrant. You do not meet, need to meet tomorrow. Thank you. Um, so that closes our, our uh, one, two, three agenda items this evening. Uh, Roman, to any closing comments? I, I, I hope right. we see plenty of residents turn out for the deliberative session or don't come crying to me. Thank you. Any other closing comments? We um, need I just I, I would like to say the same thing. I hope a lot of people come to the deliberative session, and I hope they, they look over the Warren articles, they look over the, the budget article, and, and they make a, a rational reasonable decision yep. on how it should be run, how it should the vote should go, and that they come and, and participate. Be, be a reasonable taxpayer. Realize that we need to have stuff done in this town. And it's not going to happen with the budget the way it is. It, it, you, the uh, deliberative session is your chance to get up and listen and hear and see and discuss and talk about what you want to have for your community. I encourage everybody to she go. She passed it Thank on you. before. I yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Blackman Griffin, uh -oh. any final comments? No. A motion you. to adjourn, please, at 2019. I will so move, Mr.